in the previous videos, you have leveled up your kinematics toolkit. All right. So you have learned that when an object is moving, whether it's a car that's driving or various, various scenarios that you may have done in your past year papers or the questions that we have discussed, that whenever there's something moving, there are generally two approaches to answer the question, how is it moving? And predict things like how fast is it going to move? How long will it move that way? And how far will it move? So all the how, how long, how fast, how far. Okay, so the first thing that we learn is using graphs. The graphs that I talk about are your ST graphs. So displacement is S, displacement time graph, your velocity time graph, and your acceleration time graph. So this is an important skill, the ability to graph motion and to understand the relationship between them. If you haven't watched the video, go and watch. If you already watched the video, pause and fill in the blanks. How are they related? Which gradient will give which graph? Which area will give which graph? I'll leave that to you. Okay. And the second way is from the graph, there's a big if here. If acceleration is uniform, meaning your A is constant, then you can bring out your big four equation, okay? Your V is U plus AT, coming from the gradient of the graph. S is half U plus V times T, okay? And S is UT plus half AT squared. Finally, V squared is U squared plus 2AS. If you want to use this for, you have to make sure the acceleration is constant. And my general technique is to read the question carefully. Be smart in choosing where your initial and final position is. So just a footnote. Lah. Number one, A is constant. Number two, think of the time interval. Be smart. You can watch our previous examples, if you haven't yet, about how we can choose suitable time interval. But we will do more. Okay. And number three, also think about factors, direction. Okay, so to help you with your skill in 2 and 3 and also with your graphing skill, we are now going to look at case studies, all right? So these case studies are experiments that you can do in your own house, even if you're studying at home alone or with a friend. So grab a sibling, grab a parent, grab someone, grab your neighbor, social distance, and try and see if you can do some of this recording to show how things work like. Okay, so now we're going to look at a case study of what happens when you drop an object. I know we do this every day, right? We drop an object, but what is the physics behind it? How do we describe the motion? So here I have sent Miss Lee up the stairs in MCKL and she's going to drop a tennis ball and we're going to observe very carefully what happens to the ball in her hand. So let's pay close attention. Okay, we drop it. Wow, it goes down very fast. can barely see anything. Let's try go a little more slowly. Okay, here. So, the moment when the ball drops, she, well, she opens her hand and then the ball leg goes, that's when the ball starts moving. It's at rest, right? So, actually, that's the first fact we can write down. In the beginning, before anything happens, when you release the ball, that's what we call the initial velocity. So, we say initial velocity, we always call it u equals zero. U means zero. Okay. So, when it says drop from rest, that's what it means. Okay, let's see. Continue. What happened next? Huh? Okay, okay. Continue the video. Okay, it's going down faster and faster. You notice how fast it passes through all those lines on the background. Okay, I, I rewind for you. It's going down faster and faster and then hits the floor. Okay, the moment when it hits the floor down there, that's what we call our final velocity. Okay, what do we use? Yes, we use V equals to something, some value. Lah. And this is usually the fastest it can be already. Ta-da! Okay, so this is how it, it's like the start and the end. But what happens in between there? Eh? Hmm, think about this. We say the ball gets faster and faster, but there's proper physics term for that. We say the ball accelerates down. So, accelerates down. And in the absence of air resistance, you will have an acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared. 
Now, what is that? What is the acceleration? Now, uh? acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Well, we can also write this as dv dt. Okay, rate of change of velocity. That means, uh, every second the ball is moving 9.81 seconds faster. What does that mean? Uh? Okay, okay, I show you an example. Let's say in the initial velocity t0, that's u0. Oh, the velocity is 0. La. Okay, then one second later, what will the velocity be? Ta da! The velocity will be 9.81 meter per second. How I know that, ah, Miss? Oh, ne? Acceleration is 9.81. So every second, you are 9.81 faster. So T2 is, guess what? V is, what's 9.81 times 2? Ah, oh, my brain suddenly hang. Ah, 19.6. So that's what acceleration means. You just keep adding 9.81 and then you add again 9.81 and you just keep going lah, until you reach the final velocity which would be I say t equals to t. The v will be pretty fast by then. So every second you're going faster and this is true if there is no air resistance. Okay. So how do we draw the graphs for this? Hmm. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Now we come to the cannonball animation. Okay, we're going to use this to help us draw the graphs, the basic baby steps on how we draw that. Okay, so we have a cannonball. I'm going to fire a ball like just now. Okay, it drops down. You see the green arrow, right? It gets bigger and bigger. I'll replay for you. Green arrow gets bigger and bigger. That is what we call our velocity arrow. So if you want to draw a graph of velocity, it kind of looks like that. Okay, VT. Uh, we need to define our directions because in kinematics, velocity is a vector. So, where is positive, where is negative? Okay, okay, let's define. So, let's define down as negative. How about that? Okay, we, well, it's kind of normal. I know like axis when you draw graph up is positive, down is negative. So, first step, we need to define. So, if this thing is moving down, getting faster and faster means it's something like this down getting faster and faster and this is a, supposed to be a straight line lah, okay and as we have remembered earlier the area under this graph means what ah? so the area under this velocity graph will be the displacement how far has the ball traveled okay so for this cannon picture it will be from the top right here all the way to the bottom height h or displacement s whatever you're gonna call it and you can also draw a graph for the displacement with respect to time. If I define my ground down here as S0, then up here will be at some height, like S equals to H. So I start at some height, oops, H. And from there, I will do what? Uh, I will slowly go down, ooh, pew, and then hit the floor. Actually, to be accurate, I should also match the other velocity graph down there. Okay, 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 like that. Pew, okay, there. So that is how we can draw our displacement graph. But one more thing we want to know is acceleration, right? We talked about acceleration. So acceleration is the gradient of our velocity curve, rate of change. Remember, we just said rate of change. So our gradient of this straight line is also acceleration, is also what we call this dv dt. So how are we going to draw this? You see our velocity graph, right? It has a constant gradient. It's a straight line mark constant gradient. And it's going down. So that's a negative gradient. So constant negative gradient is like this. All. What's the value? Negative 9.81. I draw on the man already. Okay. So this is the three graphs you're going to think about. Start with the velocity in the middle. Then think about displacement. And think about gradient, which is the acceleration. And that's how you can think of something when you drop it from a high place. So you have watched... Miss Ellie walk you through how to draw the kinematics graphs for an object falling under the influence of Earth's gravity. But in today's example, or in this example, we are going to look at something at a different planet. Well, let's look at this. Hmm. A lead sphere is released from rest. Okay, I got, I got information. I'm harvesting information. Here, u is equal to zero at point x a long way 
long way above the surface of a planet. Did they specify what planet this is? They didn't, right? They didn't say, oh, is this planet uh, Mars? Is it Earth? Don't know. So basically, I don't know what the gravitational acceleration is. Is it 9.81? Is it something else? Don't know. So we need to verify this. Is this planet Earth? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. You don't know. Okay. But we know the sphere is falling in vacuum. So probably it's not. Lah, all right. But anyway, falling in vacuum. What is the implication of falling in vacuum? When you see the term vacuum, this immediately cues you in that the air resistance or the drag force is zero. So air resistance or drag is zero. Meaning the only force or the only acceleration here comes from gravity. It then comes from gravity. Okay. So after a time of 4 seconds, it has fallen through a vertical distance of 3 meters. Assume the acceleration of free fall is constant. Okay, so here's the question. How far will the sphere have fallen from point X at 20 seconds after its release? Okay, so I'm going to draw the drawing first. So I'm going to start with X. X is here. Okay. Here, t is equal to 0. So after 4 seconds, I'm going to write 4 seconds here, our ball has fallen a distance of 3 meters. Okay, And then the question here is asking us, if the ball is allowed to fall some more, some more, some more, some more here, what is this new distance? Teacher, the new distance measure from where? From point X. So we're going to measure from the top all the way down here. I'm just going to call this H. So we are looking for H. Okay, from X. All right. I guess first things first, I need to verify is gravity 9.81. So obviously, I'm going to use the initial and final states where I have more information about. So I'm going to quote t equal to 0 as initial and t equal to 4 as final. Okay, so I'll write here. From t equal to 0 to t is equal to 4 seconds. Okay, lie. S-T-U-V-A. Stuba. So the distance, okay, before we even start trying to fill this in, we got to decide which direction you want it to be positive. And in this case, I'm going to choose down, down as positive because if I look at all my vector quantities, namely my displacement, my velocity, you see all, all of this is going down. Okay, they're, trans they're all moving down. So because they're all moving down, I'm going to take this downward direction as positive. Okay, you like, you want to put negative also can, then everything is negative. Okay, so this means my S is 3. My time is 0 to 4 seconds. So that would be 4. My initial speed, I release the ball, 0. I don't have final speed. I'm trying to see whether my acceleration is 9.81. So pause the video and think of an equation. What equation would you use when you don't have V? Okay, I don't have the speed of the ball at this position. What equation to use? So I hope you chose the right equation. Uh, we will use the equation v square is u square. Eh, no, no v, sorry. We will use the equation s is ut plus half a t square. Hmm. Okay, the equation is given to you in the front page of the question paper. So I'm going to put 3 here. This is 0. This is half. I'm, I'm going to find acceleration. t is 4 square. And from here, I press my calculator. This is 6 over 16. Wow, this is not gravity, my friend. My dudes, this is not gravity. I mean, this is not Earth's gravity. Right. Okay, so this shows me that since A is not equal to G, which is not equal to 9.81, the planet is not Earth. It's some other random planet lah with a smaller mass. 
But don't worry, free fall means falling under the influence of gravity. Even if you are falling under some random alien planet, the physics still works. Isn't that fun? But we have a different value of gravitational constant. Okay, so right now, I can now extend my time frame from 0 to 4 seconds to 0 to 20 seconds. Okay, so this is an example of how you can use different time frame to find what you need. So now I will use t equal to 0 second to 20 second. Okay, so I'm going to move this final position here. Initial on top, final is down here. Down here all the way down here okay so in order to do so i'm going to stuva all over again okay standard operating procedure stuva is your best friend so right now i still don't have v so i can technically use the same equation the only difference now is i'm looking for h my time is 20 seconds my initial speed is zero because i still take x as my initial position distance also measure from x one okay so just we're looking for this one and our acceleration, we calculated the 0 0.375. Okay, so we'll use the equation with no V. Yeah, teacher, same equation, yellow, 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 buy one, free one, ma. so nice, right? Uh -huh. So we're going to put that in. S is UT plus half AT squared. Cool, we're going to sub that in. And this is H is equal to 0 plus half 0 0.375 20 squared. Okay. okay, so I moved it down a bit for more space. But if I press my calculator for this, I will get 0 0.5 times the acceleration times 20 squared. This will give me a nice round number of 75 meters. So the answer is B. Okay, so what did we learn in this question? Number one, we cannot assume just because you release something from wherever you release, it has to be gra gravitational free fall on Earth 9.81. I know we are very Earth-centric, but sometimes it will be on a planet. So if they give you this extra value like 4 second, 3 meter, you should do your due diligence to double check and calculate and see whether your acceleration is G. Okay, but whether it's 9.81 or 0 0.375, the G is always pointing in this direction. This is your G, which is, I mean, not gravitational constant G, but this acceleration here is 0 0.375 because it's accelerating downwards, what, meter per second squared. Okay, and we, or rather, I have decided to choose downward as positive. So everything that is every arrow that you see in the diagram that is pointing down is positive. That's why this H is positive, 3 is positive. Okay? So all this is straightforward because your particle is always traveling in one direction. But we're gonna move on next when we throw a ball up and then the ball come down. Wow, teacher change direction. Yes. Then some have to be positive. And some have to be negative, and maybe we shall look at Miss Ellie throwing a ball first. That will be in the next video. I will see you there.